Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And just giving you guys a quick recruiting update. So remember Lewis Parker, the outside linebacker, 99 acceleration. He's a beast, 80 overall right now. He's a Juco, so we had to go after him. But look at that lead. We have an 800-point lead. Doesn't look like other teams are even going after him at this point. So this is a good sign. We do have a top recruit pretty much. I mean, I don't want to say he's locked, but, I mean, look at the projected cutoff. He's projected to cut off every school except us, so he was probably just looking for a school to go after him. So, Bo Anderson, the tackle, we are in second place, and we do have a visit coming up, not for a while, week 12, but we are 200 points behind Purdue. Uh, Josh Dunbar, who's a solid freshman corner, corner, he will be, 82 man, 84 zone. He probably might be our best guy in coverage. He's got 79 acceleration, which is bad, but you know what? We're going to get him locked up. I mean, look at that. I mean, he's close to committing. Ashton Cohen is well this is a quarterback that i found 85 throw power but here's the thing he's a juco and he was projected to be like low 70s overall he actually turns out to be 69 overall so i don't know how good he really is going to be for us but i mean anything can help at the quarterback position right now ben miller is a guy i actually just found nobody was going after him he's 16 percent locked uh he's going to be an incoming freshman but look at him he's the number nine tight end out of michigan and he's got decent like pass catching skills 80 route running 80 spectac 78 catching traffic moving down the line chad ball is another juco receiver that we found on the board uh we have 335 points committed to him he's pretty decent 93 speed 88 excel he definitely will help right away uh his route running all that's kind of decent it's not overpowering but 73 overall you can't really go wrong with the team we have vince cohen is the next guy uh we are in the lead for him if you look at him he is a athlete and I mean, he's decent. Look at this, 90 speed, 92 excel. We could use that somewhere. I don't know where we're gonna use it, um, but we'll have to see. Uh, it looks like he's more of a defensive guy than an offensive guy, but you never know. He might play a little bit of offense, but his carrying is at 52, which does alarm me a little bit. Justin Washington, which is a guy I really, really like. He's gonna be an incoming freshman as well, but 81 excel, which, uh, I mean, it's not that good, but I like this guy because he's got 75 catch, 76 route running, 90 speed and uh we're pretty much in the lead for him too we're, we got him locked up adam grant another tackle we do need some offensive linemen so we're beefing up this line he's got 81 impact block which we could have used especially running the ball and then coming down the line we do have a couple of other prospects mainly the two quarterbacks right here joshua rich and matthew hines looks like we're pretty much locked up to get joshua rich 80 throw power 72 throw accuracy he's pretty decent actually um so and then we have matthew hines so that's going to do it for our recruiting board. We do have to uh, schedule a couple visits, but let's look at our matchup against Wisconsin. So Wisconsin is one and two. I mean, they're one and two. So this might be a game where we can, I don't know, we, we possibly upset them. We do have to play the run well. We know they can run the ball, but look at that. Points per game is only 12.7. They're actually lower than us in points per game. Uh, if you look at it, uh, look at their schedule com coming up. I mean, they have a pretty tough schedule, but Ohio State, they just lost to them 7-20, to and then Terps 14-24, to Maryland, that is. And then they barely beat FCS. Did you see that first game? Let me go back to that. FCS, they barely beat FCS by th four points, 17-13, to so... We might have, we might have found our matchup, and plus this is, this is a rivalry we're gonna try to create. Marquette versus Wisconsin. Remember, we our one of our goals was to take over Wisconsin football. And look at this, Horny Brook. He's doing not too good. I mean, 38 completions to 89 attempts. I mean, that's a horrible completion percentage. And then uh, Jonathan Taylor, he's got two touchdowns on the year, 248 yards through three games. I mean, you would think a Wisconsin running back would have at least 300 yards by now, but Man, let's just hop into this game, man. I'm excited about this one because we got to stop the run. And we're not really known for stopping the run. But if we can focus our defense on stopping one thing instead of having to deal with so many athletes like we had to do with Oklahoma, we might have a better shot. So, man, let's hop into this. We are on the road, too. So let's go. One thing I want to continue to build on is a strong run game, a good play action game, and right off the bat, making a difficult throw into traffic. There is uh, 
our quarterback there, Carrington, and Jared Ingram once again getting the handoff on back-to-back -back plays, and this one's going to go for 12 yards. So Jared Ingram, I'm telling you, I've been using him a little more each game, and he's been showing that he can live up to this bell cow billing, and there is Medley, and Medley is an unsung hero in our offense in the slot, but here's Ken Carrington getting sacked that time by the Wisconsin defense, but on a third and 24, got to throw the ball deep, but Kentrell comes up with the play, and man, a third and long, a tight end matched up against a safety, and look at this play here, he snags it, but if you look closely, the ball was deflected into his hands, he takes advantage and takes that one to the house, but the Wisconsin Badgers come back out on offense, and they got Jonathan Taylor, the Big Ten Freshman of the Year in real life and legitimate Heisman candidate come next season on the first play of scrimmage, takes it all the way to the house, but we have a bell cow of our own, and we're going to give it to Jared Ingram on a couple of plays, getting two nice nine-yard gains that time. And on a third and seven, Carrington's going to drop back once again. Who did I just say is kind of the unsung hero of this offense? It's Keon Medley because he's playing the slot so well. But here I am running a triple option, and Carrington gets bailed out that time, trying to pitch the ball, gets hit. The ball is loose, but our offensive lineman picks it up. So once again on a third and six going for it, but... Deontay Williams is there for the deflection. So we do go for it on a fourth and six, but Carrington cannot get it to the receiver on the curl route. So it's kind of like, it's not like a punt, but I mean, they don't take over with great, great field position, but they're right closer to 50. But Jonathan Taylor finds the cutback lane, gets open, and man, he is just a monster. Look at that, slipping off a tackle, getting up inside the 15-yard line. So on a first and 10 at the 15, Corey Brooks going to drop back, have all day to throw, throw into coverage, and that one's almost going to be picked off, but their receiver somehow comes up with it, and you know what, Jonathan Taylor finishes off the drive, and the Wisconsin Badgers, this is the battle for Wisconsin, and they are up 14-7 to in this one at Camp Randall, but on the next drive, Keon Medley getting behind the defense that time, they were playing a cover two. Keon Medley finds the soft spot, and Carrington puts it right on the money. And now we are inside of enemy territory. So on a first and ten, running another play action. I'm telling you, this play action is definitely freezing the defense because Cantrell's getting open once again. And on a second 11, Carrington's running a little option. Remember, he's only got like 56, something like that speed. But he's getting behind the defense, and he's running these options pretty well. But on a third down, the Wisconsin pass rush gets to Carrington, and we settle for the field goal. So we're only down four here in the second quarter, but they have that man, Bruh. Jonathan Taylor, and he's making a couple cuts, breaking the tackle, getting past the 50-yard line, and we just cannot stop this Wisconsin offensive line I mean they are just hemming up our guys Jonathan Taylor's doing whatever he wants but on the next play we're finally getting a stop there behind the line but on a third and four they're going to throw a screen but look at these blocks that they are getting from their offensive linemen I mean they are all over the field whether it's run block pass block I mean they are just destroying us here on defense so Hornybrook leads this team down the field, but on a third and goal, they attempt to run the ball, but we get in for the uh, stop there, and that one was to be Bradrick Straw, and they probably should have had Taylor on that one, but we take over here, almost three minutes left in this half, and Sanford is getting open on the third and five on the whip route, getting to the outside, so here we are, second and nine, two minutes left in this game, and Stanford once again getting open on the sideline, keeping his feet in bounds. So now it's under two minutes left, and we're going to give the ball to Jerry Ingram. Keep that balance going because this run game is really working for us. So on a second and two, Carrington's going to drop back and find McCray over the middle. Haven't heard his name yet this game, but he gets the catch on that one. 
but on a second and ten, the pass rush is coming, but Cantrell is there for the catch and the first down. So now it's about a minute left, but look at this. Carrington goes down with a knee injury, so Zach DeLuca has to come in because, remember, Wolf is hurt. So now we're down to two, one quarterback, one healthy quarterback, but he does finish the rest of the drive off. So it is 17-17 going into half with that Glenn Hall run up the middle, and Hornybrook's going to try to drive down the field one last time he's finding AJ Taylor so they still got time left it's not yet halftime 20 seconds left in his half he's gonna find Fumagalli over the middle once again now they're getting past the 50 yard line so on the next play first and 10 they're gonna run a draw play with Taylor but pay attention to this next sequence so the clock is running but they gotta run a hurry up here they're gonna try to get one last playoff they have a timeout they could use it but they attempt to snap the ball and go verticals and we get in for the sack as time expires and this is gonna be a 17 all game after the I don't know that was a blunder by Hornybrook there in the coaching staff, they should have called a timeout, perhaps settle for the field goal, but instead they try to go for it, and it backfires. They end up not getting any points there. So here it is, the third quarter. They start out with the ball, and once again, they're finding PV over the middle, getting inside of enemy territory to the 20-yard line, and on a first and 10, the play action works since they're running the ball so well. So here they are, once again, a second and four, and... Horny Brooks going to have all day to throw, and this time he's finding Fumagalli, but we do get him stopped before the first down marker. So on a third and one, they attempt another throw across the middle of Fumagalli, but that one's going to be caught. Horny Brook barely squeezes it in there, but on a third and goal this time, they're attempting to run the ball, and this time we get the stop at the one-yard line, so they have to go for it on a fourth down, but Bradrick Shaw, this time he's not being stopped. He gets in for the touchdown so now Wisconsin is up by a score and once again another triple option it fumbles and luckily our offensive lineman Larson falls on it that could have spelled disaster for this Marquette offense and on a second and six we attempt to throw the ball away and we get sacked so now it's a third and 15 we're finding Stanford on the sideline and we have to go for it this is a big, big game on the road, and we get the first down, Carrington, with the slide there on the triple option. So now it's a first and 10, and Carrington is just showing that. He's got that accuracy, and that injury early in the uh, before the half ended, I mean, it's not really affecting him. He's came back in this game leading this offense on the field, and Jared Ingram just bullying his way into enemy territory down past the 20 yard line so on a first and 10 miller wayne miller's gonna get the ball on this one in the slot he's filling in for some injury for some tired receivers and on the next play a couple plays later wayne miller should have had the end zone on that one but he gets stopped so on a third and go we're attempting to run the ball glenn hall but we're on the one yard line we gotta go for it so we run the exact same play and their defensive end block sheds our guard that time and gets in for the stop. So that's devastating here to start the fourth quarter. We had a chance to stop it, but they attempt to run the ball, get it out of the goal line, and we ended up stopping them, and they forced a punt. So Brad Spencer is back to receive this punt, and he starts us out with a nice 16-yard return to set up this next drive. So there's six minutes left in this half and Herman Rogers finally gets involved in this game on the play action and Ingram bullies his way into the end zone and man Ingram is showing that he is a monster and we tie this game up at 24 and they are attempting to run this ball but this time I think we're figuring them out 
Ali Christian with the tackle for loss on that one. So on a third and eight, they got Hornybrook. They throw the full Magali, but that one's going to be thrown into the stands, onto the sideline. So there's five minutes left in this game. And look at that busted play that time. That was supposed to be a jet sweep, and somehow Ken Carrington kept it, and we get a nine-yard game out of this. So it's getting towards the end of this game here. So I'm going to be trying to run the ball all I can, run the clock. And as you can see, there's three minutes left in this game on a second and 10, finding Cantrell on the play action. So two minutes left on a third and goal, attempting to run a triple option, and Ingram's going to stumble up past the first down marker. So now there is 30 seconds left in this game, just trying to get the ball to the middle of the field in Wisconsin. Calls a timeout, stops us on fourth and goal, but we convert, and it's going to be three points on the board for the Marquette uh, Golden Eagles, but Wisconsin, they got 20 seconds left, two timeouts left. They throw a screen pass on the first play. Next play, the throwing it to Fumagalli. This is crunch time, and with nine seconds left, they throw another screen pass. So they, I don't know what they're doing. They're throwing these screen pass thinking they can get yards. So it comes down to one last play, and look, they're lined up under center. They're not even lined up in shotgun, and they run the ball with Jonathan Taylor, but he has a couple of blocks. But we get the tackle. And <laughs> did you see that? He had an open lane for the touchdown. Check this out again. And we kind of got lucky on that one. What a way to end the game. Jonathan Taylor, who was lighting us up all game. They ran the ball with five seconds left. They didn't even throw the ball. And that's what, how it ends. And Marquette, the battle of Wisconsin, we come away victorious in epic fashion. And what a comeback it was. Jonathan Taylor was a handful all game, but we get it done. And Ingram has a beastie game for us. So, man, that feels good, man. It feels good to finally win a game. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, man. We got Bowling Green next week. We can go on a little bit of a win streak. So let's keep this going. Let's get it.